about two weeks ago, I did a video on our school board meeting at Shakopee. And while it didn't go viral, <laughs> it got more views than I expected. And it was interesting to find out that my sensei from my self-defense class told me that he watched it as well. That was kind of a surprise. And last night when I went to the school board meeting, I had a couple of people come up and ask me, am I going to do another one? And after last night's meeting, I decided to do another one. So here I am. So there are a couple of things I want to talk about related to the meeting last night. And the first thing I want to cover, as you, as you can see here, I've got the link to the board meeting and dates and the information. I, I will put this link along with a couple of other ones that I'll mention in the first comment to this video. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is my little speech. I decided to do to, to submit to speak at the beginning where the school board lets the community, six people, talk for two and a half minutes. And I had written out what I was going to say. I had practiced it and I went up and I was because I was called and I did my my speech in about two minutes and 30 seconds, a little under. I don't think I was ever as nervous giving a presentation in my entire life. I have played in bands in front of people. I've been in plays. I've done numerous presentations at conferences and user groups and you know discussions and interactions at my job. Never, ever felt that kind of tension. But when you're in a room where half the people are just waiting to interrupt you and yell at you if you do not fall in line with what they are thinking, it's a little, you know, it, 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 it doesn't lead for a very um, rational meeting and, and a discussion. So my, my speech was probably a little, you know, quivering just because I was nervous. And I thought about it later. And I said to myself, you know, I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I'm, I put myself in that position to, to talk to an audience that may not be in agreement with what I think. I realize if I think I'm right and I think that the position that I'm holding is the one that is the correct one, then say it. Just say it. If other people don't like it, that's okay. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that audience participation in a little bit. But what I first want to do is give the speech that I did verbatim. It only takes two and a half minutes. I do have links to the recordings from last night, but unfortunately they were having some audio visual problems. So the recording that I was listening to, it's hard to hear what's being said at times. So, and I'm not going to watch the whole video again either, even not just my talk straight through, but the whole thing. It was, it was interesting. <laughs> so I'm going to spend the time right now. I'll put the, the text up on the screen and I will just read it verbatim. So if anybody had any questions about what I was actually saying, here you go. Thanks for giving me the time to speak tonight. As we all know, the levy vote is now open and will be until November 2nd. One concern that I've heard expressed is how much taxes will go up if the levy passes. It's a fair concern. We've all seen tax dollars used in ways that we don't agree with. But what about the other path? What's the cost if we don't pass the levy? We'll lose teachers, and the teachers that remain will have larger class sizes to deal with. I'm already hearing testimony from teachers with larger class sizes this year, describing the stress on the educational experience for the kids and the time it takes for teachers to complete all their work. This will only get worse. What does this cost look like? We may lose support for kids with special needs. My wife is a SPED paraprofessional at Eagle Creek, and we're unsure if her position would be removed. These special needs kids need a lot of attention to find inches of improvement. Without a levy, what's the cost to these kids? We'll lose extracurricular activities. I'm wearing my son's trap shooting shirt in support of this activity that he's done over the past two years. What if that's removed? What's the cost to kids who want to participate in an activity, but will no longer be able to do so? 
What if a student has a chance of getting a scholarship in an activity that will no longer exist at our school? What's the cost to them? Property values will likely go down. Confidence in our community will decrease, and businesses may decide to not invest in our area. What does that cost look like for us? We must count the cost. It may not be as easy as visiting a website to see an estimated tax amount, but we cannot just look at the increase in taxes. Everyone wants their kids to succeed and do well in school, but communities thrive when they work together. That means that we contribute such that all our kids have a better chance of being successful and our community has a better chance of growing. Finally, to our school board, I encourage you, do not be influenced by tactics of intimidation and threats that our current representative has chosen to do. Tying a decision of mask wearing to school board harassment and potentially crippling our community's future by not advocating for a levy he likely never had any intentions of supporting. Let's vote yes on the levy. Okay, so that's what I said last night, <laughs> if it was unclear. Um, I'm not wearing my, my son's trap shooting shirt, but I did last night um, just because that's an extra, extracurricular activity he's been involved with. And it was meant to show this could affect your kids as well, something that they've wanted to do or you know are doing. That may go away. And if you look up the details on the levy, the thing to keep in mind is that the levy doesn't pass they're basically doing what they call a double shot against the extracurricular activities because they didn't make any cuts this year. So they're going to have to make double the cuts if the levy doesn't pass. So just want to make that clear. I'm also going to clarify what I mean at the end by our current representative, because I think it's very important to talk about that as well, but I'll get to that in a moment. So the, the, the school board meeting basically happened in two parts. And there was a recess, a break for about 15 minutes in between. And I'm glad that the school board did this because I've been saying that I think school board meetings should be close to the public until further notice, not just for Shakopee, but everywhere. Because it is becoming very clear that certain members of communities are doing nothing but trying to harass school board members and also other members of the community as well. And it's, it's, it's to say it's getting out of hand is is an understatement. This is absolutely ridiculous that it's that it's happening this way. The school board was very clear that we get time as community members to talk if we're if we're chosen to do that presentation, and then the rest of it is the school board doing their agenda. And it's apparent that people in the audience had their own agenda to try to push. The thing is, there's no point in having any type of discussion with them because it's a mob mentality. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, they're just trying to entice you. They're trying to upset you. They're trying to get you to react. And they will say anything in response to continue this vitriol. It's not fun to sit there and listen to this, but... At the same time, if you try to respond to them, it will just rapidly spiral out of control. So I give the school board credit. They powered through the point where they said, you know, how they clarify when mask mandates will kick in. All the school board members, save one, voted yes on it, and they immediately went to recess. Even the person that voted no, which for the record, I completely disagree with his reasoning and rationale as to why. But even he said that this is not how we act. This is not how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. I don't remember his exact words, but even he was saying this, this is not right. This is not how we're supposed to do things. I really hope that not just for Shakopee, but other school boards start taking a very, very hard stance on how these school boards are, these meetings are conducted. They shouldn't be this way. This is, this is just not right. And hearing some of the comments that were being done, you know, it and what were said, some things just went beyond the pale. It was extremely disappointing to hear how people were acting. So the nice thing about them taking a break is because after that break, they all left. It's clear to me that they have no interest in the actual process and support of the kids 
the student, the students, the faculty, the staff of our district. They just they just left. So the the tension in the room diminished rapidly after that. And it was a good thing. But I would suggest from now on that again, school boards take a very hard line stance. And if enforcement is needed from police officers, then do so. This this can't continue. We, this is not the way that this works. All right. The last thing that I want to mention is what I said in my speech, which is the current representative and the lack of support, to say the least. I can't believe I'm recommending a Facebook site. <laughs> I do not like Facebook. I actually dumped my account over a year ago, but I have what I call a burner account, and I just use it to be able to see things on Facebook when necessary. But I am very adamantly not trying to be a part of that world anymore. But there is a site on, and on Facebook called Fact Checking Eric Mortensen. And I highly encourage you to read what is being posted. Because Eric Mortensen is our represent, representative for District 55A. And to say that I think he has done an extremely poor job of representing all of us in the community is an understatement. This is a, an email that he sent to all the board members. And if you read down at the bottom, he'll, he says, any vote to continue to force kids to wear masks this Monday night will be considered a direct assault on the kids of Shakopee schools. If you vote to keep masks mandates in place, you will spark a political backlash and the parents of the district that you refuse to listen to will ensure that the referendum goes down in a ball of flames. Further, we will actively work to ensure that you never serve on the school board again. How is this somebody that is representing the district? How is this you know, indicative of somebody that is thinking for the, for the best possible outcome for our district? The mask issue, COVID-19, and our operating levy that we are voting on from now until the last day, which is November 2nd, are separate issues. If we didn't have a pandemic, going on, we would still have this operating levy issue. And our school district desperately needs this to pass. I can't stress this enough, that if you live in Shakopee, if you live in our district, you have to get educated on this issue if you haven't done it already, and vote on this issue. And I highly encourage you to vote yes on both question one and question two. And to be clear, don't just vote on question two. You have to vote on question one because that needs to pass before the results for question two will even be considered. So it's not like you're going to save money by just doing question two. You have to vote on one, and then I would suggest voting for two as well. But for a representative to make a statement like this, to basically say that the referendum goes down in a ball of flames, I would assume that what he is saying here is he's referring to the, the levy as that being the referendum. I could be wrong on this, but I, you know, I'm pretty sure that's what he's getting at. And if that's true, that's just so disappointing to say the least to hear from our representative. And if you don't like members of a school board and you want to run against them to win their position, that's your right. I'm not disputing that. Anybody can do that. Anybody can be a member of the school board. But to actively work to ensure you never serve on the school board again that's language that I think somebody who should have some political acumen should have really thought through how that was being worded. And I want to make clear, I don't think these people that are demanding that everybody in the school board gets removed, apparently the guy too that voted against having a mask mandate, if we ever reach that criteria, how much work is involved in doing it? And they keep saying, we're paying you, we pay for you to be there. I don't think you realize just how little they actually get paid and that this year 
this school year, they're not taking their stipend. They're doing this for free. I would, in some ways, like to see some of these people actually try to get on the school board and win and then discover just how much hard work it is to do this and how many hours you have to dedicate to meetings and discussions and and all these other activities. It's clear to me that Eric Mortensen is a failure in representing our district. And come 2022, we need a better candidate. And while I tend to lean a certain way politically, to me, it's not even about voting Democrat or Republican. It's about voting for somebody who is going to be competent in what they do, who's going to be active in our community, who's going to be thinking about what's best for our community and how to move it forward. Not this. Not this. I highly encourage you to take a look at not just this this email, but other things that are on this site. Well documented about things he's done or not done. We need better representation. To end... I'm still going to go to school board meetings for a while, at least until the operational levy vote has concluded. And I'm not going to, you know, count any chickens before they're hatched. I'm not going to, you know, assume that it will or won't. I really hope that our community comes through and votes for this. Because as I said in my speech, there is a cost that we must consider. And that cost to me, should sway people to vote for yes. So I'm still going to go to the meetings. I kind of imagine that the audience is going to taper off. Maybe not. Maybe they're going to keep coming and keep protesting for something. I don't know. But I do think over the next coming weeks and and months that the you know, especially once the the vote finishes, that things are going to smooth on, come back to normal. Now, of course, if our if our county goes over these limits and a mass mandate must be set, I am sure there's going to be howls of of you know dissension and parents descending upon the high school demanding that kids do not be masked and telling them to go into school and and don't listen to anybody. You know. Blah, blah, blah. You know what's funny is I asked my two sons, do you like wearing masks? They said, no. I said, is it that big of a deal if you have to? No. It isn't. So maybe there will be some protesting and and whatnot, but we'll, we'll see about that. If I go to another school board meeting, as I said I would, and something interesting happens, I'll report it. And if it doesn't, I'll do another video and say, nothing happened. See you next time. <laughs> yeah. And we'll just leave it at that. Um, again, I encourage everybody, if you're from the Shakopee District and you you haven't voted yet, I'll leave a link to where you can go find out all, all the information about the levy, where you can vote, what times, all that stuff, all the information about the, the paths of voting for it or not voting for it. And I highly encourage you to please vote yes on this. This is for not just our kids' future, but for our community's future. Thank you for listening.